Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to be going over uh, prefetching and hardware, right? And how we can kind of show the effects of prefetching uh, using a pretty simple micro benchmark. All right, so let's go ahead and start digging into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to go over is a very, very simple benchmark called uh, Row Major. And all we're going to do is create a 32 megabyte array. All right, so it'll be uh, in rows, um, and in columns, right? So it's just a square matrix, um, two to the 12 and both dimensions, right? So two to the 12 times two to the 12 times four, that's the number of bytes. So that's going to be equal to 32 megabytes. And then inside of this loop, so if you're not familiar with Google Benchmark, inside of this while s to keep running, that's where we're actually going to be profiling, right? So Google Benchmark will run this until we get a stable result. Right, so in this, simple case, right? So in the row major case, we'll just access sequential elements. So we'll access elements, uh, on row zero, we'll access elements zero, one, two, three, four, five, etc., all the way to n uh, or n minus one. And then we'll start on the next row, right? So what are we expecting here in terms of performance? Well, we're expecting in terms of um, our cache hit rate, we're expecting it to be high. We're expecting it to be high because, you know, first of all, when we access the first element, we don't just bring in one element from memory, we actually bring in a whole cache line, right? And that cache line, generally something like 64 bytes, um, will have a number of elements on it. So in this case, it should have probably around 16 elements, right? So 16 times four bytes, right? That's gonna to equal to 64 bytes with the size of a cache line. So what we're expecting is we'll pay the cost maybe for one element, and then we get, you know, maybe 15 elements, other elements for free. Right, and this is going to happen over and over and over because we're just accessing sequential elements in memory. Okay, so what happens when we have uh, something that's a little bit different, right? So not crazy different, but a different access pattern. So in this in this case, we're going to be accessing in column major format. So older programming languages like Fortran assume column major, which basically means that elements in the same column are you know spread out you know, sequentially, right, in memory, right. So uh, in this case, right, so C++ use row major, right? So these are actually going to be very, very far apart in memory. So, you know, the zeroth element of row zero will be in elements away from the, the zero element of row one, right? But it turns out that prefetching helps a lot here, right? So what, what does a prefetcher actually do? So here inside of our, uh, our inner loop, all we're doing is we'll load in from the jth row um, every single time a constant uh, whatever's at the ith element. So the uh, column is going to stay the same inside of the inner loop, but the row is going to change every single time. Well, this is going to mean that every single element will be on a different cache line, so we're getting no locality there. But this is where the prefetcher steps in. So we have this constant stride here. So we're accessing the zeroth element of the zeroth row, the zeroth element of the first row, all the way to the n minus one element of the n, or, or all the way to the zeroth element of the n minus one, minus one row, right? So the, what a prefetcher will do is it'll you know detect this kind of stride, and it will say, okay, well you act access to the zeroth element, of the zeroth row, and then you access the zeroth element of the first uh, of the first row. Well, maybe I'll start trying to load in maybe the zeroth element of the second row the zeroth element of the third row, right? So it tries to play a little bit of catch up and predict where we're going to go next, right? And for very easy access patterns like this, especially when it's this constant access pattern, so all these elements are offset by n elements in memory, right? That's what it's doing here. And we'll also get some, you know, some nice effects from prefetching here, right? We also have a constant access pattern. It's just that here, these will require different cache lines because they still are very far apart, you know, actually in memory. So they won't be on the same cache line. So how do we show that, you know, you know, we can already kind of intuitively tell that this is going to be worse than row major, but how do we show that, you know, we're actually getting any prefetching or that prefetching is helping out here? Well, that's why we have this last one called random stride. And basically what we do is from a different cache line every single time, so we guarantee a different cache line by doing the same kind of column major, but now we're accessing a random element within that column, right? So these, uh, we have you know two to the twelve elements in each row, right? So we're accessing uh, a different one or a random one of those two to the twelve elements, right? And those will be on different cache lines. So now because we have this non-constant pattern of what we're accessing, you know, prefetchers are in the hardware, so they're going to be fairly simple. So it's, 
it's going to be you know, pretty much impossible to detect, especially when we're using you know, this random pattern. So we should expect it to be a whole lot worse, right? The performance a whole lot worse. And we can show this, right? So this is a Google benchmark. So what we'll do is we'll do, we'll compile this. So uh, we have to link against, you know, just boilerplate stuff. We have to link against libbenchmark and libpthread. That's just for Google benchmark, optimization level of three. I'll put a binary called prefetching. And let's go ahead and run this. So we see very, very different results here, right? So, you know, to just traverse linearly row major order, all 32 megabytes of elements, right? Uh, it takes us about 15 milliseconds. That's pretty quick, right? Then we see that when we have column major, it's going to be worse because they're going to be on different cache lines. We can escape that, but it's only, you know, 91.8 milliseconds, right? So it's significantly worse, about six times worse. Uh, but it's nowhere near as bad as if we were just expecting that we had to go out to say maybe memory and pick up a new cache line every single time, right? And that's really where the prefetching comes in. And so how do we show that? Well, with the random stride, we're also you know going to guarantee that we're going to get a, a new cache line every single time. But this time the prefetcher can't predict which cache line it's going to be. And so you see, we actually have this huge penalty. So from the pre, the you know, prefetching case where the prefetcher is still kicking in, it's about you know not quite ten times slower, but it's you know it's getting up there. And so we can kind of narrow down. So this because it was so long and only ran for one iteration, so we can kind of expand that out. So we'll do dash dash. We'll zoom in a little bit. Dash dash benchmark filter is equal to uh, random stride, right? And so that will let us narrow down to a benchmark and then we do a dash dash benchmark min time and this will give us a number of time and seconds we want to run this so we can say run it for three seconds right and you see that you know now we've run it for five iterations right over about three seconds and it's still about 821 so this is a fairly stable result it's not going to swing that much Right, so this is really why it's important to understand what your hardware is doing, right? And so this, you know, we, while we used, um, you know, just simple arrays to show this, right, to show the effects of prefetching, uh, you know, this is something that extends out, right? So as long as we have things that, you know, we're accessing, right, and then our, uh, you know, the stride and memory we're accessing from, you know, the prefetching will kick in there as well. It's not just specific to arrays. Um, arrays are just a very, you know, easy way to show how this happens. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this example. So kind of wrap up, we'll go to our, uh, we'll just look back at the code and wrap things up. Prefetching.cpp, right? So go to one. So first we looked at row major. So if we're accessing elements sequentially, we get kind of double benefits. So we'll have multiple elements that we need to access on the same cache line. So We get some great locality there. Um, and we also get prefetching because we have a constant stride that we're working off of. So the prefetcher can help us. So it can automatically detect, hey, get the next cache line in. Um, the next thing we can do is call a major. So this time we won't have the same, we won't have multiple elements on the same cache line, but we still have this constant offset between elements. So the prefetcher can say, okay, go ahead and grab the next cache line because I know it'll be in elements away. And then finally, we to show that prefetching was actually going on, we went, okay, well, what if we don't have a constant offset between elements? What if we have, you know, maybe we'll guarantee that they're going to be on a, you know, we won't ever have two elements on the same row, but we'll go ahead and make sure that, you know, which row we're actually getting will be, you know, potentially different every single time by using this rand right here. So we're going to be doing a, uh, getting a random number. And it's also important to know here that the dominant thing is going to be memory here. So even though, you know, we typically say that modulo is a slow operation, right? Um, things like optimization will even, you know, help take care of this because we're, you know, getting a number from RAND. And also memory is going to be way slower than modulo is going to be. So the dominant thing is going to be these reads, right? And so, you know, that's kind of how we can show, you know, how the hardware is actually working using some software. But like I said, that's going to do it for today. Feel free to check out any of this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. I host all this code there. It's all open source. So if we go to C++ crash course, that's where I post all the code from the C++ series, but we have things on GPU programming as well uh, in the CUDA crash course series. So we looked at optimizations and then here we're at prefetching. So feel free to take a look at this 
or any of the other code I have for things like you know explaining false sharing or things like branch prediction using uh, virtual function calls, right? And kind of showing off these features of hardware using software. But like I said, it's going to do it for today. I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.